All right. Uh, Howard Schultz, as I just mentioned, is now back. Uh, he uh, had served as the CEO of Starbucks since, uh, excuse me, he was replacing uh, Kevin Johnson, who had served as CEO since 2017. So if you're unfamiliar with Howard Schultz, uh, he helped turn Starbucks into the global brand that it is today, uh, overseeing the company as it grew from 11 stores and 100 employees, which is, this is amazing, to 28,000 stores worldwide. Uh, and now he's back. Why is Howard back? It's not just to replace the outgoing CEO, Kevin Johnson. It's because Starbucks has got its hands full with its workforce. And they're going, we need Howard back. Starbucks workers are increasingly upset. And not only are they upset, they are banding together and trying to make unions happen. There's a wave in the Starbucks employee base and group um, that are trying to make unions happen store by store. Now, this started in a Buffalo, New York region, uh, and now it's sweeping across stores throughout the country. Close to 190 Starbucks stores have petitioned for union elections, and 10 stores, half of which are in Buffalo, and the others are in New York City, Mesa, Arizona, and Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, have voted to join Workers United. So they've, they're not just talking about it. They're voting to do it. They're getting all fired up. Uh, in this article, which, by the way, is a, uh, I believe this is a, um, uh, boy, I don't know what it is. Anyway, what is it? Thank you. NPR. They've got a picture of a bunch of Starworks or a Starbucks workers huddled, raising hands in the air as though they have just won a big basketball game or football game. If you detect a little bit of rancor in my voice, I'm just getting warmed up. Hang on for about two minutes. I'm about ready to tell you fine folks the lie that unions tell you and the negativity that unions create. Oh boy. Stay tuned. It's just moments away. But here's what's going on. Starbucks employees who are referred to as partners by the company as a whole, um, they want higher wages, changes to scheduling systems, and transformation of how the company handles tips. Some have expressed frustration as pandemic benefits, such as hazard pay and daily food and drink allowances, were taken away, even while Starbucks sales rebounded and profits soared. Uh, so, so Schultz comes back. And the big mess he's got to try to clean up is this whole unionization situation. So he goes to, to Buffalo where all this started, and he talks to the workers there, and he basically says, this is a direct quote, no partner has ever needed, and he's talking about, again, Starbucks employees, that's what they refer to them as, no partner has ever needed to have a representative, he's talking about union rep, to seek to obtain things we all have as partners at Starbucks. I am saddened and concerned to hear that anyone thinks that this is needed now. Now, it's not just Starbucks. Amazon, last week, a tiny new union managed to pierce Amazon's Maginot line, or Maginot line. Maginot, thank you. That's what I said first. Thank you very much. I'm hooked on phonics. Don't ever doubt that, folks. Um, at an 8,000-employee warehouse in Staten Island, New York. Now, let me tell you something, folks. I don't know what you know about unions, I'm going to tell you all, I know more about it than the average bear because I used to be in politics. Um, it's not easy to unionize 8,000 employees. That's harder to get, that's harder to do than it, than it is to get a consensus vote at a Baptist business meeting, Baptist church business meeting. And that's the all time worst thing you've ever seen in your life. And you Baptists relax if you got your feelings hurt. I'm a Baptist preacher's kid, so shut up. I can make fun of my own. All right. Everybody tends to think, if you're not educated on what unions are, that, oh, it's a good thing. Now, folks, I tell you every day that I'm a man of the people, and I am a man of the people. But unions are bad for the people. Why? Well, number one, unions don't 
organize and represent you, the people, for free. It actually costs you money. Union dues. Go do your homework on the Google. All right? About all the bad stories and awful ways that union leaders take those dudes of hardworking American women and men and abuse them. Don't use them properly. Number two, unions create an unnecessary adversarial tension between the employees and the company leaders. Just by having a union, it already says from day one, it's us versus you. Number three, unions' decisions don't always represent the people in the unions. They don't always advance the wishes of the employees. Number four, unions by nature discourage individuality and personal growth. Because it's not like, hey, I can win in this company and grow, climb the ladder. No, you can only do what the union says you can do. Oh, Ken, you're starting to make a good point. I know. Strip politics out of it for a second, if you dare. You ready for this? Because unions create higher costs for companies and drive prices for consumers up. Hey, unions aren't unions. It's a political organization that doesn't help anybody.